Welcome back to my Minecraft mod notebook. This is Industrial Optimization uh, uh, Part 3B. It's uh, the second part of my generator analysis. Uh, it is currently the 3rd of December 2013 and this information is uh, versioned for Minecraft uh, 152 and 164 uh, versions of the mods. Just as a an aside, I am currently not playing with Greg Tech, so some of this information may be uh, slightly dated. Uh, but I believe the uh, the core concepts should still be valid. Uh, one thing I did not cover in the previous. Uh, previous part was the uh, RTG from IC2. Uh, this is very much a new edition. Uh, again, pros and cons, same format as before. Uh, usable anywhere, and uh, I'm not going to say exactly easy, but uh, getting enough fuel for it for uh, 16 EU per, blo uh, per block is uh, very very doable. Uh, once you have the fuel though there is no fuel usage so it is simply a uh, in as far as a calculation uh, standpoint it's simply outputting 16 EU per tick. Uh, the downside of course is that it is reprocessed reactor fuel uh, so you're gonna have to set up uh, one of the IC2 reactors first uh, there are several designs out there, and I will be covering this in a later uh, chapter. Uh, for these, there is no documentation whatsoever. Uh, your best bet would probably be to turn to the forums, which unfortunately, again, uh, pages and pages of stuff to, uh, to dig through there. Uh, one of the probably more popular options, or at the time kind of the cool new in thing uh, the railcraft steam turbine outputting IC2 power uh, upsides it really only needs a bunch of iron it's 200 EU per turbine which on paper yes it looks good but we'll get to why that's not necessarily the case here in a second uh, it does have renewable fuel uh, charcoal is popular set up tree farm and put charcoal uh, it does have an 80 hour turbine life and the turbines are rather easily repaired with uh, just some more steel which is basically iron plus charcoal uh, it does have a single energy connection uh, so you're only going to have one point that you're going to be inputting power to so probably a few less calculations on that side uh, very major downside that's a very large multi-block structure uh, you have the for the full size uh, kind of best case scenarios uh, it's the nine base pieces uh, so nine fireboxes plus the 36 boiler blocks uh, plus two of the uh, steam turbines at 12 blocks a piece gets you 69 uh, tile entities once you run all the math through it's uh, 5.8 EU per block and uh, of course being a steam boiler it does have the uh, uh, opportunity to occasionally undergo a catastrophic failure event. Uh, while we're on the uh, steam power, uh, the other option for steam generation from Railcraft is the, and it shouldn't be steam turbine, uh, but uh, for uh, the same setup for Billcraft power, uh, it simply needs a bunch of iron. Uh, 700, actually that number is wrong. Uh, 720 uh, steam per boiler which I believe is 144 uh, MJ per boiler uh, again renewable fuel uh, yet more downsides uh, instead of being 69 time entities it is uh, 81 uh, lots of connections and again uh, catastrophic failure events are a possibility so uh, looking at the Billcraft to industrial craft uh, power generation options you're probably going to want to stick with uh, with 
IC2 as much as possible for this option. Uh, at last, we're going to get to the Greg Tech options, uh, thermal generator, uh, pros, pretty much free material cost, uh, especially coming from Greg Tech. Uh, low material cost is not really something Greg's known for, but odds are, uh, assuming that it's still using the aluminum plates, you're going to have that in quantity. Uh, usable anywhere, 24 E per block. Uh, this is a slight improvement over the default IC2 ones, and it again has a smart fuel usage. Uh, same downside, limited lava supply, um, so you might want to go start pumping your nether. Uh, the Greg Tech reactors, uh, the last time I played with Greg Tech, it had, uh, this was before the reactor change, and I believe Greg's doing yet another reactor change for his mod. Uh, so it's more options, uh, same upside as IC2 default reactors. Uh, again, it's a it's an add-on to the IC2 reactors, so it has the same downside. Uh, some of the parts are prohibitively expensive. I'm looking, of course, at the uh, iridium reinforced neutron reflector. Yeah, it's great, but it's going to take a bunch of iridium and a bunch of parts, and by the time you have the iridium to spare uh, to throw out this sort of project, you're probably going to have something a lot better than this reactor. Uh, the plutonium uh, rods, I believe, have a larger catastrophic event failure radius than the default rods, so something to keep in mind if you're worried about potentially reducing your base to a very large crater. Uh, the semi-fluid generators, uh, again, similar to the thermal gens. Uh, very, very inexpensive in terms of materials. Uh, usable anywhere with the smart fuel usage. Uh, the downside uh, of all the Greg Tech generators, this one's probably the lowest, uh, 8 EU per block. And uh, what limited types of fuel there are, are probably going to be better used in crafting. Uh, the diesel generator I believe this is for uh, ethanol or refined fuels. Uh, again, very, very low material cost considering it's Greg. Uh, usable anywhere, respectable uh, EU per block and smart fuel usage. Uh, again, it's kind of a, it's a specialized generator for a specialized fuel. And the renewable sources of this are going to take quite a bit of reprocessing. Uh, finally, the gas turbine. Uh, this is the original, uh, or the first variant of the gas turbine, the single block structure. Uh, material cost, uh, all things considered, again, it's Greg, uh, but I believe you're going to have the materials required for this in abundance. Uh, usable anywhere, and in the later or latest updates, uh, the 16 EU per block that it was originally at has been reduced by, or uh, reduced to 80% of that. Uh, it does have the smart fuel usage, and it does allow you to recycle most of your biomass. Uh, unfortunately, doing so does take uh, processing, uh, processing time and power and uh, machines. However, for those who are doing, I believe it's the titanium production cycle, uh, you should be getting quite a bit of uh, hydrogen gas cells out of it. Uh, those hydrogen cells can be recycled through this turbine to recoup, uh, I believe, a rather significant quantity of your power. Uh, I believe it's going to be about 20%. So that's always a very solid option to uh, make two or three of these just for a little bit of power recovery. Uh, the large steam turbines. Uh, this is, I believe, Greg's attempt at uh, having a different option than the railcraft turbines. Uh, this I've, I haven't actually used yet, so my uh, actual hands-on experience is a bit lacking. Uh, 800 EU uh, per tick capacity, and it is a Greg multi-block. Uh, what that means is that instead of having every single block check and say, 
oh hey, am I part of something? It only checks, uh, well, I know his lightning rods, according to the code that he posted, uh, only check once every uh, 256 ticks, and it's in a single direction, so he's done, uh, well, it might be a multi-block, he's done quite a bit to reduce the amount of, hey, what, what all do we need to figure out, uh, sort of calculations. Uh, and it is several days between part replacements. Uh, the downsides, of course, though, uh, even though it is a Greg multi-block, it is still a multi-block. And once you get more than maybe two or three of these, your server's going to start to feel it. Uh, of course, being Greg, it's probably going to have some sort of ridiculous material cost. Uh, prob your more efficient or longer life parts are going to be very much in-game. And uh, considering that the part cost and the the fact that by the, by the time that you've got the uh, materials to get everything up and running at that speed, 800 EU a tick probably isn't going to be that great. Uh, the magic energy, uh, both converter and absorber, uh, converters first, absorbers on the next page. Uh, these are less of your traditional generators and more of the uh, tie-ins with another mod type of generator. Uh, the converter, uh, usable anywhere, rather respectable E per block. Uh, unfortunately, these the fuel required to run this is rare, or rare-ish, and it comes from other mods. Uh, and the material cost for this, for uh, a relatively low EU per block output. Um, these do cost quite a few diamonds, so that's a very potential downside. Uh, the Magic Energy Absorber, uh, again, 32 or 128 EU per block, usable anywhere. Uh, the anywhere is for the 128. Uh, the 32 EU per block is a passive, however, it is limited to uh, a very specific location. Uh, so that option is probably not going to be there. Uh, again, limited fuel options from other mods, and uh, this costs yet more materials than the Magic Energy Absorber, or the uh, the Collector. And at last we start to get to the uh, major hitters from Greg Tech. Uh, the Dragon Energy, Dragon Egg Energy Siphon, bit of a mouthful there. Uh, major upsides, usable anywhere, and the first uh, quad uh, EU per block rating, uh, 1024. Uh, major upside again, this is not going to use any fuel, uh, although you are going to need the egg, uh, so you're not going to it's not going to be consumed, but you are going to have to have it available. Uh, major downside is that it's limited to one. Uh, and there is a config option, which is very good, uh, to allow for more than one of these to be placed. So if you can get more than one egg, uh, I think most people could probably safely run their base off of this. Uh, of course, it is Greg, so you might need maybe two. Uh, for people running servers, just uh, disable the config, and suddenly you've reduced uh, you've reduced people's massive network of uh, cold generators to a pair of dragon egg siphons. Uh, of course, the material cost is going to be somewhat prohibitive uh, until you get at least to the mid game. The plasma generators, um, again, one of those usable anywhere generators. Uh, 2048 EU per block and effectively unlimited fuel. Uh, both of these are very major upsides. Again, probably your average player, if they're playing with Greg Tech, um, can get away with maybe 8 to 12 of these generators running their entire base. Uh, there are some, uh, some situations where you're going to need more than that, but for most of your material processing, uh, six to eight of these should be enough. Uh, downside, though, is that you're going to need a fusion reactor. Uh, the first time we set up this on the server, or on the server that I'm on, uh, 
several of us pitched in resources and split the output, and it was enough to get our next uh, four or five reactors up and running. The material cost, uh, the generator itself, is probably not all that expensive, especially considering that, again, you're going to need the fusion reactor, which is, uh, well, that gets interesting pretty quickly. So, the fusion reactor itself, while not a power generator anymore, um, it is needed. So I'm going to go ahead and toss this in with the rest of the list. Um, major upsides, well, while it is a multi-block, it is a Greg Tech multi-block, so you're not going to have too, too much, uh, hey, am I, am I, am I a valid multi-block spam to the server? And one of these can power uh, 31 plasma generators. Uh, technically, it's 31 and a half, but considering you can't exactly run half of a plasma generator full time, uh, I just went with a rounder number. And with a little bit of math, uh, 60, 63,488 EU per tick. Uh, unfortunately, this comes with a, a bit of a cost. Uh, downside. Uh, material cost, material cost, and yet more material cost. Most people think of these things as some monstrous beast that you're never going to make until like three months in. I might have made one on the second or third week. Actually, I think I made one on my second week of playing, and I had my third up by the next week, so all things are relative. Um, major, major downside. Uh, for the fusion reactor though is that you're going to need uh, close to 200 support machines for the high efficiency output and that by high efficiency I'm referring to only needing um, I believe it's between 18 and 20,000 I don't know the uh, exact number off the top of my head right now uh, but 18 to 20,000 EU per tick of power generation is going to go simply to material reprocessing, so getting the material to run the generator, or the, the plasma reactor, or the, the fusion reactor. Uh, the lower support side option only requires 18 machines, uh, but it does consume half the power output. So somewhat ironically, you're probably going to be better off running uh, a pair of these reactors, uh, both on lower the lower support cost. Uh, one to one reactor is going to be running all the uh, the material production, and the second one's going to be just for power. Uh, this sort of uh, option is something that I would like to see addressed in the form of uh, more compact machine uh, style uh, mods or at least options. And lastly, we have the lightning rod. Uh, this is one of those kind of strange contraptions that people, I think, overlook a lot. Uh, major upside uh, in terms of actual power generation, uh, 8192 EU, it is a single block. Uh, now, there does need to be a lightning rod actually attached to it, but, um, so it, in some ways it does count as a uh, multi-block structure. Uh, no fuel, of course. It's pulling power from the uh, lightning strikes. And it only checks this once every 256 ticks. So it's not going to be terribly, terribly spammy. Uh, downside, though, is there is a relatively high material cost. And the power is dependent on the size, size of the rod. So larger is better. And that also does mean that you have to be building it at bedrock. Uh, so somewhat limited in uh, placement locations. Uh, you're also going to need rain, uh, at least rain, if not uh, preferably lightning storms. Not necessarily a terribly uh, difficult thing if you have uh, miscraft, but most people, at least those that I play with, don't necessarily like the Minecraft rain. So, uh, a little bit of math, and this is back from uh, 152. Uh, four lightning rods can power three matter fabs. 
uh, with uh, some amount of surplus. So assuming that you can get your constant lightning storms, your uh, matter fab should be running pretty much full time, uh, assuming that you've got the scrap to do so. Uh, also, these pair incredibly well with the IDSUs. Uh, just plop four of these down with a single IDSU. Uh, and suddenly you have uh, power teleportation uh, with a very significant amount of storage. Uh, this IDSU pairing, though, is reliant on Gray continuing to use the uh, U per packet uh, wiring scheme instead of the uh, EU total wiring scheme. Uh, if that changes, uh, this system will no longer be valid. So, with that in mind, and of course I'm going significantly over my time, but I'm very close to being done. Uh, the Greg Tech in-game power options uh, pretty much going to be one of two things, either fusion reactors or lightning rods. Uh, the fusion reactors, of course, are going to be significantly more ticking tile entities. Uh, best case scenario is going to be roughly 30 plus wiring, uh, plus the 31 generators. Uh, it's going to get you about 32k uh, EU per tick, or about uh, 500 U per block, which isn't really that great. Uh, upside though, plasma is very portable and it's significantly easier to move that around than uh, building uh, IDSUs. Uh, the lightning rods though, uh, four lightning rods plus an IDSU, so five blocks for the same 32k U per tick, uh, very much more preferable in terms of uh, energy per block, although uh, the energy net is going to be somewhat limited by the IDSUs as they can only output 8192 per tick. Uh, and if you need more than uh, three or four of those, especially in the mid-game, uh, those are going to get pretty expensive pretty quickly. Uh, in Minecraft 162, and probably later, he did change the recipe to be somewhat cheaper. Uh, so instead of needing, uh, I believe, 64 Lapidron Crystals, you only need uh, 6 to 12, I believe. Uh, also, you're going to need multiple Transformers for this, uh, for the Lightning Rod setup. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be blowing up all your uh, machines and whatnot. Uh, also, this setup is very scalable. Uh, I can see where you would need more than a single chunk of Lightning Rods. <clears throat> excuse me uh, but that would be uh, more for a city sized project and less of an individual base sized project uh, even for me so finally uh, what can we do uh, now that we've looked at all these generators and what sort of options we have uh, you're going to want to use systems with a good power to block ratio uh, this keeps the number, number of actual generators down and the number of uh, Less generators also means less wiring, less uh, energy net connections, which is, well, it can't be a bad thing. Uh, producing power locally uh, for this, if you can do inter chests or inter tanks and not run large cables, uh, it's probably also a good thing. Uh, teleporting power, if there's that option. Uh, we saw that with the IDSUs and lightning rods. Uh, lots and lots of power coming in from the uh, the lightning rods and just teleport that up to your base wherever that happens to be uh, your compact whatever generator mods uh, even though the solar power might be just absolutely abysmal by itself uh, if you get 512 of those in a single block you go from the uh, slightly more than half an, uh, half EU tick per block to uh, 278.4 which is Quite respectable. Uh, what we do need though from the mod devs is more mid tier generator options. Uh, currently, for default IC2, we have nuclear, nuclear reactors, and even those uh, need to be multi box before you can get more than 512 output or 
uh, having 512 uh, staple output. So uh, again to the mod devs, um, here's a little bit of code that you might be interested in. Uh, if you've got a player specific energy pool, simply incrementing and decrementing that should be a lot less calculations than uh, running any sort of energy net pathfinding. Uh, so also don't make, don't go making your teleportation so expensive that you can't use it. Um, if you're gonna do something like energy teleportation, make sure that you've got a uh, like a low voltage, medium voltage option also, and don't go making your your LV uh, power teleporter stacks of diamonds and iridium plates and all that stuff and a 75% loss rate. Why are you gonna use that? People are just going to say, okay, well, screw that. I'm going to run my wires. Um, so, again, less wires for the, the power teleportation options. Um, and now that I'm not playing with Greg Tag, I do truly miss my IDSUs, even if they are relatively pricey. Um, also, don't go adding tons of extra configs without or extra costs without configs to remove them. Um, the current uh, situation that my server's in is 20% uh, power loss on uh, inter IO power teleportation. I believe thermal expansion at one point had a 5% loss to get energy into the network, and an additional, I believe it was either 10 or 15, uh, 10, 15, or 20% uh, power loss in teleportation. So you keep losing power and you keep losing power. Uh, well, at some point people are going to say, okay, screw that, I'm just going to run my wires. And every time you, uh, you keep losing power, you're going to need to make that many more power generators to, um, to compensate for it. So that will wrap up this, uh, this chapter. Uh, I am looking at my clock and I do notice that I'm almost at the 30 minute mark. Um, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to go and slice this uh, this up. I might end up re-recording it. But until then, think big.